The following program is sponsored by Community Psychiatric Centers and is produced for educational purposes only. It is not intended as a substitute for medical or psychological advice, diagnosis, or treatment. The content should not be used for self-diagnosis or treatment of any health-related condition. As always, seek the advice of your health care provider with any questions regarding a medical or mental health condition. Welcome to Community Psychiatric Centers Presents. Tonight we're talking about depression, a condition we may think affects only adults. But depression can affect children too, and without a proper diagnosis and treatment, they may suffer in silence. To help us understand childhood depression and what can be done to help, let's meet our experts. Dr. John Carrasso is Clinical Director of Community Psychiatric Centers. He's a clinical licensed child psychologist and a certified school psychologist. And Dr. Robert Lowenstein is medical director of community psychiatric centers. He's a board certified child, adolescent, and adult psychiatrist and a fellow of the American Academy of Child and Adolescent Psychiatry. Good evening, gentlemen. Good evening. Uh, Dr. Lowenstein, can a child become depressed in much the same way that an adult becomes depressed? And if so, what does that depression really look like? Well, depression in children affects about 5% of the general population of children every year, which is a fairly large number. Depressed children uh, do not appear depressed often the same way that adults do. Uh, children are not able to often express feelings of sadness or depression. They may present with other kinds of signs and symptoms, which can include uh, feelings of um, feeling ill, such as having headaches, somatic complaints, headaches, uh, stomach aches, other aches and pains. They may also have, uh, they may appear to be anxious, irritable, um, moody. Um, they may also have exaggerated fears of the dark or you know, being away from their parents. In addition to that, uh, we suspect that children are depressed when they have decreased appetite or increased appetite, when they have sleep problems, either they sleep too much or too little, when uh, they uh, seem tired all the time, bored in school, they may have problems in their ability to uh, do well in their schoolwork where they had done well before. Uh, they have trouble concentrating. They have trouble making decisions. Uh, they sometimes are able to say they feel like life is not worth living. They may express suicide thinking at times. Uh, Dr. Cross, we know a lot of things that make um, adults become depressed, but what actually makes children become depressed? Yeah, good question. Yeah, as is so common in, in disorders and problems we've discussed in the past, usually there's a some sort of genetic predisposition for a child becoming depressed. What that means is that if a child is depressed, it's usually, what's well, not uncommon that there's a parent, a grandparent, an uncle, someone or somewhere in the family who also struggles with depression. And then usually there's some underlying trigger or some trigger that, that, that results in the, in the depression coming to the surface. Now uh, that may be any number of things, usually a perceived loss of some sort. Um, for example, a loss of parent through death or divorce could be a number of um, perceived failures. Uh, uh, it could be one traumatic event or it could be a series of events over the course of time. Now, the, the depression is characterized by what's referred to as the, as the negative cognitive triad, which is a fancy term. It simply means that the child has the experience of seeing themselves, the world, and their future as negative and as depressing. Um, when that happens, the depression almost takes on a life of its own. Uh, it becomes rather self-perpetuating in that they tend to perceive even potentially positive events as negative. And so when that happens, it becomes self-fulfilling. They expect things to turn out negative, which is depressing in and of itself. As Dr. Lomestein mentioned, um, the idea that there was a time when it was questionable whether children could become depressed. It, it, that was questioned. Of course, we know otherwise, not that they can. And as a matter of fact, it could even be said conceivably that they're even more vulnerable to depression than adults are, considering that they don't have the life experiences, they don't have the coping strategies that adults have. And so that it's even more important during stressful and difficult times to support children and, and guide them through the process. 
Do parents sometimes miss it? You know, is it something that's easy to miss? Well, they miss in the, in the sense that they, they tend to, at times, we'll, we'll, we'll discuss this in a little bit, but the idea of questioning whether it's serious, is this, is this a phase, or they're just moody for, the, for, the, for a period of time, is this going to pass, and not recognizing the seriousness of it. That's, mm -hmm. That tends to work what's missed. Well, and it's often missed because some of the symptoms or signs are things that parents don't often know is caused by depression, and we think the child is just ill, is feeling down about something. Also, in adolescence, it's often uh, easily missed because adolescents themselves are often somewhat depressed, gloomy about life in general, and they uh, appear to be depressed even if they're not. Um, we know that adolescents are depressed when they begin to talk about suicide, when they begin to say life is not worth living, when they begin to say, you know, I'm giving up on life. They no longer have friends they used to have, they start to fail in school, use drugs, have an eating disorder, sleep disorders, those kinds of things. So they tend to verbalize it more as an adolescent than a, a child. Might. Yeah, absolutely. And the risk of depression in adolescent and girls is far greater than it is in boys. Probably three to one girls are depressed over boys in general. Is there any reason why? Do well, we know why? Well, they think it has to do with the hormonal changes that mm -hmm. girls go through, and uh, that particularly uh, tends to predispose them to feeling depressed. So girls tend to internalize while boys tend to externalize. And so with boys, you tend to, you tend to with males, you tend to see more behavioral issues, which by the way, can, can mask depression. And in girls, you tend to see more depression, and depressive mm -hmm. symptomology, because they tend to take things internally more. Mm -hmm. All right, we're going to take a short break. We're talking tonight about child and adolescent depression. Uh, we'll be back with more on Community Psychiatric Centers Presents right after this. Stay with us. As a parent, you want your child to reach his or her full potential. For children with autism, early detection and treatment can make a world of difference in your child's life. At Community Psychiatric Centers, our autism unit is led by two highly trained and experienced mental health professionals, Dr. Robert Lowenstein and Dr. John Carrasso. Their expertise in the field of autism spectrum disorders means you and your child will get individualized help you need every step of the way. Community Psychiatric Centers, connecting you, your community, your world, one family at a time. Sometimes we joke and say, hey, buckle your seat belts because we know that anything can happen that night. We're always trying to figure out how to get the news to you as quickly as possible. News is in motion. It is something that never stops, so we never stop. At Channel 11, there is never a slow news day. We all know the mission, and it's to bring breaking news to the audience, to bring local news to our viewers. We are there live on the spot with information that you need to know. Of course it's fast. It's Channel 11 News. It's who we are. Welcome back to Community Psychiatric Centers Presents. We're talking with Dr. Robert Lowenstein and Dr. John Carrasso of Community Psychiatric Centers about child and adolescent depression tonight. And Dr. Lowenstein, how do you actually determine if a child is depressed? Uh, what does the assessment look like? Well, um, a psychiatric assessment or a psychological assessment begins with a thorough, comprehensive evaluation of the child and their family. This can include uh, a review of the signs and symptoms of depression that brings the child into the uh, assessment, uh, some of the signs and symptoms that we just discussed. It's also important to go over the family history of depression or anxiety, which clearly tend to predispose a child to get depressed themselves. Further, a, a family member who is chronically depressed sometimes is just unavailable to the child to be able to parent the child fully, and that may also contribute to the child being depressed. Family history of violence or domestic abuse the child has witnessed can predispose a child to depression. Their being abused and neglected themselves predisposes them to depression. It's important to get these uh, past history uh, information as part of the evaluation. And then we do a comprehensive, what's called uh, a mental status exam, which is um, an evaluation of the child in the interview process, looking at how they think, how they feel, seeing if they have a thought disorder. If they, for example, present with any psychotic symptoms or suicidal thoughts, that needs to be considered very 
uh, seriously. A diagnosis is made and then a treatment plan uh, is formulated. If the child is suicidal, that treatment plan has to include um, addressing those uh, problems clearly. Dr. Grosso, what are some of the common strategies that are used to help children who are diagnosed as depressed? Sure. The, the first step would be to, if we can determine the underlying causes of the depression, uh, specific loss that the child's experienced, then we can work with the child to help them understand the loss, process it, work through it. More globally, however, there's t typically three areas we'll focus on. One would be uh, cognitive or thoughts. Uh, focusing on the child's thoughts through play techniques and interactive uh, activities. The idea being that if we can, this is true for adults too, by the way, if we can control how a person thinks, we can control how they feel in terms of, of if a person has depressive thoughts, then they'll have depressive uh, feelings to go along with it. So if we can turn those thoughts around, help them be more healthy and help them be more productive, then uh, the mood tends to, to, to lift and to elevate. Also behavioral strategies. People who are depressed and children who are depressed tend to withdraw. And so if we can uh, uh, increase their level of involvement in activities and pursuits of that nature, then that too tends to help. We also provide lots of reinforcement, uh, reinforcing their efforts toward becoming involved, as well as reinforcing the, their success. There's lots of praise and, and, and hugs and affection, that sort of thing. And then finally, interpersonally, um, again, people who are depressed, children who are depressed, tend to socially withdraw. And we're going to counter that by, by getting them involved in activities and pursuits of that nature. Dr. Lowenstein, when does um, medication come into play? Is it in every mm -hmm. case? Well, uh, it's very helpful uh, in most cases. Um, uh, there have been a number of studies that show that a child treated with some of the psychotherapy, such as cognitive behavioral therapy or the interpersonal therapies or family therapies, certainly do um, achieve some success in uh, improving their depression. If that's, however, combined with a course of antidepressant medications, uh, clearly the, the success rate is much higher. There are some people that feel you can treat a child only with medications and the success rate is the same as treating them with uh, some of the psychotherapies and this is open, this is being studied uh, currently. All right, let's take an email question from one of our viewers. My eight-year-old child seems more irritable lately. He doesn't smile like he used to. Could he be depressed or is it just a phase? Uh, really depends upon how long have these symptoms been present. Uh, a lot of children that are anxious or have symptoms that look like uh, ADHD can be uh, misdiagnosed as being uh, depressed. On the other hand, uh, there's something called comorbidities, which means that a patient or a child can have two different diagnosis at the same time. For example, you can have a child who has a depressive condition and also uh, an anxiety disorder or a depressive condition and uh, uh, ADHD. So it really it depends upon the severity of the symptoms and how long they've been present. And that's really a challenge for parents. We discussed this earlier, a phase thing. In terms of a, a, a challenge for a parent is determining, okay, my child's moody, my child's having some behavioral issues, whatever the case may be, and determining, is this a phase? Is this something I should be concerned about? Should I seek professional assistance? Or is this just going to pass? Uh, one of the, the three elements that we use among other things, would be determining the, the duration, the intensity, and the frequency of, of the incidents and the symptoms. And we can use those three elements to, to determine severity. Um, however, even with that, uh, it's still tough for parents to, to get a sense of it. And so we, we really emphasize, uh, give us a call. We can talk about it. We can discuss the matter and determine, is, is this serious? Should you come in for, for an assessment? Or is this a phase that's going to pass? One of the things I know we've talked about in the past, you can actually call your offices for a free phone consultation. And that kind of mm -hmm. might answer some questions right off the bat. And it's highly just recommended. And mm -hmm. as opposed to guesswork and thinking, well, maybe, uh, maybe I'll just see if this is a phase. I'll, I'll wait another week or two um, and, or a month or whatever it may be. Again, give us a call and we can talk about it on the phone and get a sense of just how serious it is. Any idea what percentage of cases uh, you might actually say, come on in, you know, let's, let's talk, let's see if we can diagnose this. Is it, does it happen often because? Well, I think it does happen often because by the time parents often call in, they themselves have a, have a good idea that something sure. really is wrong. Uh, it, takes, it takes some uh, perseverance or, uh, to pick up the phone and say, you know what, I, I've got to get help for my child. 
Can childhood depression sometimes be like an iceberg where you only see a little bit of it on the top and, and there's a lot underneath? Absolutely, and a, a child who is depressed is not functioning well. They're not doing well in school. They're not doing well at home. They're not doing well with friends. They seem to be failing, seem to be dropping out. They seem to be uninterested in activities that they used to enjoy. Uh, so it, it, it really is uh, quite a debilitating for the child. All right, we're going to take a short break. When we come back, we'll have more of your email questions. If you have an email question you'd like to send into our doctors, remember you could log on to their website, www.cpcwecare.com. We'll be back right after this. Do you have a child, adolescent, or teenager who is having trouble at home, in the community, or at school? Call Community Psychiatric Centers for help. Community Psychiatric Centers provide psychiatric and psychological evaluations. I also work as a school psychologist. We do school-based evaluations. We provide in-home services, outpatient counseling, medication management, autism special services as well. When a child is in crisis, when a child is suffering, when a child is in pain, a family is in pain and a family suffers. And our goal is to relieve that pain and find the child where they are and help the family to heal. And that's the basis of our program, is to help families to heal. For a free phone consultation, call Community Psychiatric Centers today at 1-877-899-6500. And watch Community Psychiatric Centers Presents, Wednesdays at 7.30 on PCNC. Community Psychiatric Centers, connecting you, your community, your world, one family at a time. Welcome back to Community Psychiatric Centers Presents. We're talking about child and adolescent depression tonight. And uh, let's talk a little bit about drug use. Uh, Dr. Crosser, does possible drug use uh, play any factor in an adolescent appearing to be depressed or irritable? Can well, that? Well, it can, sure. And that's, that's a very important part of the assessment process. Uh, initially, when working with an adolescent and, and, and uh, interviewing the parents, we will get a strong sense of the, of the background, uh, any potential for drug use, any signs of drug use or alcohol use. You can have to keep in mind that if a child appears depressed and they're using substances of some sort, uh, for example, alcohol, alcohol is a depressant, and so a child can appear depressed if they're abusing alcohol. Also, keeping in mind that withdrawal symptoms from various, uh, whether it be alcohol or cocaine or whatever it may be, can result in irritability and outbursts. And so it's very important to differentiate those children who are using various substances and as a result are appearing depressed, or those children who are just purely depressed. Now, now we can differentiate, and usually it's not that difficult. Um, there's any number of signs, including we'll take a look at uh, the child's peer group, uh, various behaviors that, various negative behaviors that accompany uh, drug use, and uh, if they're evident, then that's a strong sign. We're also going to differentiate those children who, or those adolescents, I should say, who are self-medicating because they're depressed, because that could be the case as well. Who are, they're, they're depressed and they're trying to make, them, make themselves feel better, so they're using as a result. And so we're going to differentiate a number of different things, which we, we do quite readily during the, the assessment. Dr. Lowenstein, if a child is depressed, um, should parents be worried about suicide? Oh, absolutely. Um, suicide is the third leading cause of death in the teenage population currently. Over 500,000 children attempt suicide each year in this country, which is an enormous amount. Our girls uh, try suicide a lot more often than boys do. Boys succeed a lot more often than girls do. It has to do with the choice of um, whether they commit suicide, uh, but they choose. If a child or an adolescent is uh, complaining that life is not worth living, if uh, they're starting to put their life in order, give away their possessions, suddenly clean their room, uh, say something about, you won't have to worry about me anymore because I'll be gone. Uh, if they uh, become suddenly cheerful after being very depressed for a long time, if they begin to display any psychotic symptoms like they're going to hear voices, or those are uh, things that need to be taken very uh, seriously and uh, the parent does need to get uh, help for the child quite immediately. Um, 
because of the risk of the child trying to commit suicide. Some people ask, um, is it wrong to ask a child, are you feeling suicidal because you put their, some thought in their head that they might then act on? And the answer to that is no. It, it, actually, children tend to appreciate being asked that question. It gives them a sense that someone cares about them, gives them an opportunity to talk about their feelings, and that they very often will be very honest about those feelings. Dr. Uh, Carasa, what's the difference between depression and manic depression or bipolar disorder? Is there a mm -hmm. difference between all of these? Sure, sure. Actually, we'll, we'll be discussing that um, uh, more thoroughly in upcoming program. It used to be called manic depressive disorder, now it's called bipolar disorder. And uh, it's somewhat confusing, but I'm going to be best to, to try to conceptualize it by looking at the, the typical range of emotions that we all experience. For example, there are times where we feel sad, times where we feel happy, and times where we feel in between, feel okay. Well, uh, when there's a mood disorder, sadness falls into, falls into depression. We've talked about what that looks like. But happiness can expand into a manic episode, which is a state of euphoria. Um, now that sounds good, that sounds like it could be a good thing, we, you know, feeling euphoric. But in these situations, it becomes quite self-defeating, if not quite self-destructive. Uh, manic episodes uh, can, can people who, who display manic episodes will have racing thoughts, racing speech. They will um, sometimes not sleep for days, or days at a time, uh, hallucinate at times. They may uh, uh, spend all their money in the bank account, uh, paint the house pink at 3 in the morning. You know, it's really bizarre, crazy things. Now, with, um, with, and actually that's why it's called bipolar disorder, because what these people will do is go between both poles, both ends of the spectrum, at times presenting as manic and at times presenting as depressed. With children, however, it's a bit different. They typically don't present, and now teens may present in that, in that typical pattern, going through various phases. But with children, there's a tendency toward uh, more erratic behavior, extraordinarily erratic behavior. So sometimes you don't see those distinct phases in children. Instead, you'll see rather dramatic and drastic mood changes, typically uh, manifesting in temper outbursts where the child is becoming destructive and uh, being set off by even minor occurrences. And those, uh, that really is the hallmark uh, symptom and sign in children of bipolar disorder. Order, those extraordinary temper outbursts. Because of the, the genetic composition yeah. of, of a lot of these um, conditions, are, are parents who have suffered from it themselves more likely to be tuned in that maybe this is going on with my child or not? Uh, depends on the parent. Uh, clearly there are some parents that have conditions such as bipolar disorder or depression who are aware that their child may also have that. There are others that are not. Uh, a severely depressed parent is unaware of their child because they're so preoccupied with their own depression. Also, uh, children with the bipolar disorder may appear only depressed. They may have recurrent episodes of depression rather than becoming manic and then depressed. If that happens, then it's even harder to make that diagnosis. All right, let's take an email question from our viewers. Uh, my child is prescribed Prozac and seems to be doing well on that. He does not want to go to counseling. Would it be wrong to end the counseling? Interesting question. Uh, that really depends upon the counseling. Uh, there, uh, clearly, uh, the Prozac might alone help the child to be uh, less depressed. However, counseling along with Prozac would probably be more helpful to the child. Um, you, uh, you can try it and see what happens um, as long as you keep the child on a Prozac. How important is that medical monitoring of, well, of Prozac or a child who, you know, I mean, yeah. how, how closely do you want to watch how they're doing? Well, you have to watch a child uh, very closely uh, when the child is on Prozac because of potential uh, side effects to, Prof, uh, to Prozac. There's a black box warning now that some children on Prozac might become increasingly depressed or suicidal, uh, so that child has to be watched. Very closely. Sure. In terms of the counseling issue, we always recommend that the counseling continue uh, to help the child develop coping strategies and help them to be more healthy in their, in their manner. However, uh, if the, typically, not uncommon, a child may resist going and may not want to attend the counseling session. So in those, in those instances, we'll take a look at the counseling, how it's set up, help it to be more engaging, uh, modify things to help the child feel like they want to go. And that, that's an important part of it. We want them to be motivated. A resistance to treatment is part of therapy, and, sure. all, pa and all patients experience that, that, and you have to explore why they're feeling that at that time. Sometimes a change in therapist is also helpful, and that's something that can be offered to uh, a child.
All right, we're going to take a short break. We'll be back with more questions for our doctors right after this. You're watching Community Psychiatric Centers Presents on PCNC. As a parent, you want what's best for your child. And that can mean asking for help if your child has problems at home, in the community, or at school. At Community Psychiatric Centers, our highly trained professional staff offers mental health diagnosis, treatment, and therapy to your child in their natural environment, at home, at school, in the community, or at one of our 11 southwestern Pennsylvania locations. One phone call can change your life. Community Psychiatric Centers, connecting you, your community, your world, one family at a time. The morning news doesn't begin at 5 a.m. It begins as soon as the 11 o'clock news ends. Viewers want to say, what is new this morning as I'm getting up? Overnight news. When people are about to head to work or to school, they need to be able to turn that TV on and know what's happening in the news, what's happening in traffic, what's happening in weather. Local news. No matter when you tune in, we're going to be able to update you on what's happening at that moment. Channel 11 morning news from 5 to 7 a.m. News coverage you can count on. Time is precious in the morning. Welcome back to Community Psychiatric Centers Presents. Uh, let's end uh, with an email question for our doctors. Uh, my child was depressed but successfully treated with counseling at Community Psychiatric Centers. Should I be concerned that the depression may return? Uh, it's important to know that uh, depression is a chronic condition. Uh, it, can, uh, there, uh, it can last for years. It can, re it can improve and then return. Uh, it often does, as a matter of fact, so that it really is important to have long-term follow-up uh, for that child or even adult. Um, there are some depressions that last only a short period of time and then don't return for years later, depending upon a stressor in a person's life, some loss, and um, some depressions just last a long time to begin with. And then keeping in mind that about 60, 50 to 60% of, of depressions reoccur. So, uh, however, the question is often asked is how long does this counseling have to go on for? And uh, any number of, of modifications can be made, including ongoing therapy on a weekly basis, or even, even sometimes titrating down to booster sessions that are once per month just to monitor things. Mm -hmm. And so there's options. And what about some services that you have at community psychiatric centers mm -hmm. to help? Well, uh, we, uh, the kind of services which help with the treatment of depression first are the outpatient treatments which we've talked about, which includes the, in the uh, interpersonal psychotherapies, the cognitive behavioral therapies, the family therapy approaches. If this is done on a consistent basis, uh, there is great chance of success. In addition, there is treatment with medications, which needs to be prescribed on a long-term basis. Wraparound services are also available for children who have behavioral issues that accompany depression, which is not uncommon, and that's helpful because it goes in the home, school, and community to that support. All right, doctors, as always, thank you for being with us, and thank you for watching. And remember, if you have a question for the doctors, you can log on to their website, cpcrecare.com. Thanks for being with us, and we'll see you again next week. The 11 at 11 format is unique in the Pittsburgh market. 11 o'clock at night, 11 minutes on Channel 11. David and I work very hard to make sure that we deliver to you the news that you need in the first 11 minutes. We also give you weather. And everybody is affected by the weather. I'm going to prepare people for the next morning. The important information you need to know to plan your day weather-wise. We know it's late. We know you're tired. We know you're busy. You want all the important information as quickly as you can get it. That's what 11 and 11 is for. Trying to sell? Looking to buy? WPXI.com free classifieds. Fast, easy, and free. The best place in Pittsburgh to buy or sell anything and everything. From homes and rentals to furniture and pets. Even tickets to shows and sports in town. Stuff you can't find anywhere else is right at your fingertips. Go to WPXI.com free classifieds anytime, anywhere. Free to post, free to browse. The most classified listings in the Pittsburgh area. WPXI.com free classifieds. Fast, easy, and free. Thank you.
Looking for great things to do in Pittsburgh this summer? Go to WPXI.com and click on the Channel 11 Summer Guide. We've got concerts, events, and great family places to go. Send us your summer fun photos with the WPXI.com sun and we'll post them online. WPXI.com is your source for everything summer on the web. For a fabulous evening on the water, reserve your table on the Captain's Dinner Dance Cruise online at GatewayClipper.com or call 412-355-7980.